Hello everybody, welcome back to another YCL season. I am your coach of the, I believe I'm using Boston Syndicals again. I could be using Golden State Wooloos, but welcome back to YCL. It's your boy Incog back at it again with another draft analysis. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and preface this now. Uh, this team is very, very interesting. So if you disagree with any of my picks, that's okay but i want to just put a few things on notice right now first off i'm pretty sure we're the third overall pick and we're in the scarlet divisions if we were split up by scarlet and violet divisions and having that no I, sorry i was second overall pick so i basically was kind of just like you know what let's see what i can do with this team because obviously i really wanted to see how good i could draft this team overall I'm not saying like other people did bad jobs or anything like that. I just want to see how good I could do drafting wise and see how well this team would work for this season of YCL. Everything is uh, technically legal that you would usually ban. So things like Revival blessing, uh, shed tail, and even Pokemon that you normally see ban like Fluttermane and iron bundle are allowed. So we are kind of just taking off the inhibitor rings with this league and I think it was Pokemon had to add up to 13 points to be your Terra captains. So obviously anything 13 and below could be a Terra captain if you don't know what that means. Um, but you could have one to three Pokemon as your Terra captains, but it's free Terra overall, which I think is an overall good decision. I understand that, you know, like random Terra types can change a game, but if I'm using low tier Pokemon for my Terra Captains, obviously they have a significant purpose with that Terra rather than a high tier Pokemon like Grimstar or Cyclozar that you can see on screen. That would probably turn into one of their stabs, if not uh, something they resist or outright are immune to. So let's talk about my team. So first and foremost, we drafted Iron Valiant with our second overall pick. Iron Valiant is a great Pokemon, great Paradox Pokemon in general. And to me personally, I think it's probably one of the few Pokemon that can easily go top five every draft. If Fluttermane, Chin Pao, Iron Bundle, Iron Valiant, and Roaring Moon. And then you can insert any other Pokemon in there if you really want, like Dango or even other uh, Paradox Pokemon. But those like general four to five are pretty good. Um, but Iron Valiant, fire, uh, Fairy Fighting, great stats overall. While I can't use it to be my Terra Pokemon, it doesn't need to do that as it can just hit really hard without needing a boost. And also, even if I wanted to, it could be special, it could be physical. It's a really good Pokemon, really fast, and definitely going to be a really nice Pokemon for me in this format. But with this Ekoro pick, I had to wait a pretty long time to get my next pick, I'm not going to lie to you. And I didn't get sniped in this draft, thankfully, except for like once, and I think it, I lost Muck, which might have been a blessing in disguise, honestly, but I really did want it. But I didn't get sniped for like the majority of the draft, so I got everything I wanted, essentially, which also means with my second overall pick, I was really thinking about Pokemon that will help me get into other Pokemon. And obviously I'm not going to draft Orthworm with my second overall pick. So I drafted Cyclozar instead. Well, most people tell you the Cyclozar doesn't do much besides Shed Tail. It also gets shift gear. It has good, you know, coverage and it's stab being normal and dragon is also really good as well, which I understand if you don't want to use certain sets, but to not try them is just to be an idiot. So obviously with me i'll be trying them because that's what i always do on my channel um but obviously she shed, shed skin but obviously we're gonna have a uh, regenerator most weeks um great coverage good stats good speed um and i wanted to really maintain that my speed tiers weren't too crazy apart which i don't think i did this time i think they are kind of like unholy as shit but we'll talk about that later uh obviously I can use the shed tail sets. I can do shift gear sets. I can even use Draco beater into a jet pack sex. It doesn't sex sets, excuse me. Um, but regardless of that fact, uh, cycles are really good Pokemon for me. And since I had, you know, basically a wheel pick, I picked up grim snarl party shot into <laughs> shed tail into everything party shot into everything. Grim snarl became such a great, a better Pokemon this generation. Like honestly, and I think people are going to really understand and see that once they really see how my team functions. As I mentioned, Parting Shot is a new addition to Grim Snarl's moveset, which definitely makes it fairly obvious what it could be running per week. I'd run dual screens with Parting Shot with a Shed Tailing Cyclozar, or I could just run Parting Shot just to get in and out of situations while maintaining offensive capabilities. There's really a lot more that Grim Snarl gets 
to do by having an ability to switch out without needing me to like hard switch. I could just parting shot out, drop stats, and be good. Obviously, they have like defiant Pokemon or a Pokemon that is dark type in general. They're not going to really care. But in general, Grim Snarl is going to be a really good asset to this team. And slowly but surely, I was realizing, damn, I'm getting really weak to certain types, mostly steel, and then also just in general, uh, poison as well. And uh, I'm not going to lie, these next two picks definitely keep up on that. And yes, they do have numbers on them, but that was their point totals, uh, of course. So don't worry about that. They all have names for whenever I battle somebody, um, but I'll probably have that maybe on screen. I don't know. We'll see what post editing Incog wants to do. Steel resist, uh, Dondozo. I think being able to party shot into a bulky Pokemon or even be able to shed tail into this is a really great ability. I don't know how I got Dondozo like this, but I did because I mean, simply put, I don't think, hmm, I think people wanted them. I just think that when you think about Dondozo, you think about overall, you know, the VGC capabilities that he has, as well as the obvious single strats that he runs. Um, but overall for me, I'll probably be running it as a curse sweeper, or I'll just use the choice band set because that's the one I really like. Most Pokemon don't want to take water attacks from Dondozo, especially choice bandy liquidations or wave crashes. And if I ever made this my Terra Pokemon, later in the season, then the coverage this thing gets is good enough to where you don't want to take a twist band a hit of those either, like Earthquake and other things. So, Dondozo definitely has a good bulky uh, water and great, great resistance berries, as well as the next Pokemon that you can see, Bronzong. Similar speed tiers just means I can run Tricker whenever I like to and put Dondozo on that team, but also Bronzong gives me immunities to poison and obviously ground if I have levitate and basically fire if I have heat proof. And in addition, uh, definitely covers up Dondozo's weaknesses as well as covering up my fairy types and Grimstone and Iron Valiant's weaknesses. So realistically, I was building a team that really was structured together really nicely. And overall, I wanted to make sure that there weren't too many holes with these top five picks and there really aren't. Um, so I'm really proud of that. And Bronzone definitely gives me that. Um, the ability to just uh, use potentially Bronzong as a Terra captain could very much mean the difference in my opinion. So we'll see how that goes for me as well. Um, outside of that, gives me rocks, gives me trick room. And in addition, gives me a really bulky Pokemon and body press. Of course, as everybody knows, Iron defense body press, my greatest uh, nemesis and greatest ally. All right, now we're getting Pokemon that are not named after their number counts. Uh, Venomoth, so Venomoth here, I've missed Venomoth for the entirety of many, many generations now. And I've wanted him back so much to a point where it was just like, man, I really wanted him back. <laughs> so Venomoth to me personally is great quiver dancing, you know, sleep powder, obviously it does the same thing that Vivillian and other mons do, but it's poison type. It can set up T-spikes. It can get rid of T-spikes. And overall, I feel like a late game sweeper or just an overall Pokemon that I can throw in there, surprise somebody with like a choice scarf set with tinted lens and hit the shit out of them. Really dope Pokemon for me, in my opinion. And I've missed Venom since the last generation it was in, which I believe was Gen 7. So obviously I really wanted it back. Um, so with this in mind, uh, Venomoth is one of my, I'm pretty sure it's one of my Terra captains. Um, I wanted to do Kilowattrel, which is my next pick. But I feel like Venomoth would be funnier, so that's really why I did it. I might change it to Kilowattrel during the season with another Pokemon, but uh, I definitely wanted to go ahead and make Venomoth one of my Terra Captains, so I did it. Uh, Kilowattrel, electric type, needed one fast, needed that. And also, it's pretty hard, actually, if the team that you're fighting doesn't have great resistances or great bulk uh, against electric and flying in general gives me a really dope Pokemon to use. Um, in general, though, kill watcher is mostly here because I really needed a good electric type and a fast one at that. And in another draft league unrelated, I lost kill a So I had to go get Jolteon, <laughs> which isn't bad. I feel like Jolteon got uh, better this generation because of Terra and also getting Calm Mind, but I do like Kilowattro. That's my dog for real. Um, that's my dog Watchrail. But 
In general, Kill Watcher hits really hard, pretty fast. And in general, I needed a Pokemon that gave me some momentum. And while I did technically have it with Cyclozar and obviously the Grimmsnarl, getting another one never hurts. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's really not much to say about Kill Watcher, honestly. Uh, moving on, though, we got our last three picks. Colossal is our second and, and more important Terra Captain. Um, arguably more important steam engine turn into a grass type get hit by water fire move and then boom plus six i don't think colossus is gonna outspay outspeed outspay outspeed <laughs> i can't speak today i don't think colossus is gonna outspeed most of the more top end threats but it'll outspeed things that it needs to to a point where it will get it going i feel like colossal as a late game sweeper is always a good decision because no matter what happens um well, I will be using it mostly for rapid spin, obviously. Um, I think that in a late game situation where Pokemon are like not doing so hot, Colossal being able to tear into whatever it wants to get hit by fire or water attack and then start going crazy afterwards, at least a little bit to break, I think is a really good decision. I don't like that it has base 30 speed. Obviously, we can use it in Trick Room and use it as a sweeper there as well if we can get it set up properly, if that is, you know. But regardless of that fact, uh, well, actually, I don't think Colossal really gets anything to really set up to become a quote unquote sweeper. But regardless, um, needed a rapid spinner and Colossal definitely fit that niche. Needed, I believe, a fire type on this team. So Colossal also fit that. And in addition, like I said, it's my next Terra Captain. So I mean, I can make Terra Dragon Colossal for some reason or Terra Steel and Heavy Slam Flutter Mains and Chien Pals or whatever have you. Like, this is a really good Pokemon. And I really hope to God that I really get to use it to its fullest effect with Terra this uh, this league. Moving out of the way, we have Berserker. As I mentioned earlier, I got sniped at a muck, so the next best thing that I wanted to pick up was Berserker, and I did that. And Berserker to me is really good. Um, Steely Spirit's great. Could be changed over to be one of our Terra Captains as well, as you probably understand, Berserker hits really fucking hard and is really dope, so I don't think I really need to explain it with Tough Claws or Steely Spirit. Definitely a really good Pokemon on this team. In addition, I definitely wanted another Steel type or a Poison type and like Bronze and Venomoth they're cool, but I wanted Muck or something else. Unfortunately, by losing Muck, I picked up Berserker, which isn't bad at all. I think both Muck and Berserker would have fit this team quite great. It's just more so like Muck gave me a lot more bulk while Berserker gives me a lot more offense. So I guess, you know, Berserker is great. I think there are only like a few matchups I realistically want to use it for, but we'll see how that goes for me, obviously. Uh, but yeah, Berserker is kind of just here, man. My boy Beard. But we got Murkrow in the last slot, mostly just here because honestly, having a Pokemon that can set up Prankster Tailwind and then die is real easy for me this league, especially with my team that's not the fastest but then becomes much faster because of Murkrow. And I say not the fastest, like I didn't draft Iron Valiant, Cyclozar, and Kilowattro, but don't, don't worry about that. Um, to outpace a lot of the other threats that might be carrying boost energy, since that's also allowed, is definitely going to be more impactful for something like the Iron Valiant and even Kilowattro to some extent, and definitely going to be impactful for our Shed Tailing Cyclozar or just a setup Cyclozar, honestly. Um, but... Obviously, Murkrow getting Tailwind, Taunt, Haze, being able to really stop setup threats in the tracks, but also being able to essentially act as just kind of, I don't know, just a, a, a stopper to those setup threats like I just fucking mentioned. I don't know, dude, but I think Murkrow will definitely be brought probably like two weeks out of the season. I'm not going to apply to you, but um, I feel like this team's really strong where it needs to be. I feel like I'm going to have some issues with more offensive teams so I play too defensively. But the objective of this team, realistically, is to play as offensively as we can with this. So basically what I'm saying is, like, we just go ham from the start. I want to make sure that I'm playing offense more often than not. I'd rather not be on the back foot starting in the game. I'd rather be able to get an Iron Valley and Grim Snarl and just hit the shit out of something. Bring in Kilowattro and Dondozo or even Bronzong to that extent and just start hitting things. Um, I'd rather play offense than defense, and that's what I'm going to do with this team. So if you're expecting me to play hard defense with Dondozo and Bonzong and all this other stuff, be aware that now you're being told we're going to play a lot of hard offense this season. So with that out of the way, guys, it's going to be the YCL draft analysis. If you guys liked it, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Tell me who your favorite member of the team is. 
uh, in the comments down below. And uh, until week one, I'll talk to you guys next time. Peace.